If your carburetor is leaking gas, nine out of 10 times, it's probably gonna be the same thing that's causing it. But before we get into tearing your carb apart, let's talk about a few things you could check first. Before we even get started, let's just make sure to disconnect the negative terminal on your battery. We don't need any sparks when we're dealing with leaking gas. We'll first look at the fuel line and make sure it's not dry rotted or cracked. We'll check the little clamp if it has a clamp where the fuel enters the carburetor and just make sure you're not getting a leak there as well. Sometimes if you have too large or a little bit of a the wrong size clamp on here, it'll actually leak no matter how much you tighten it. If your carburetor goes into a rubber boot where the orientation can be turned, just make sure it's oriented correctly, that the float bowl is in the proper position, which is usually gonna be under the carburetor. If it's turned, say, 45 degrees from that, or 90 degrees from that, it's gonna leak all over the place. Also take a look around the float bowl and just make sure that the little seal, the rubber seal between the float bowl and the carburetor body isn't pinched somehow. This is especially common if you've just torn it apart and put it back together. If you've messed with your fuel pump or fuel regulator, just make sure you have the right pressure going to the carburetor. You'd be surprised how little pressure these things need. A lot of gravity fed carburetors like on your push mowers or small riding mowers are only gonna be about a half a PSI, maybe even less. If your little engine has a fuel pump, it's probably somewhere in the two PSI range. Uh, if you get into the bigger carburetors on like a car engine or a V8, you're probably in the five to six PSI range. And this is super low when you compare to things like fuel injection, which is gonna be around 50 PSI, give or take, or even direct fuel injection or direct injects into the combustion chamber where it could be a few thousand PSI. If it isn't one of those things, it's probably the float needle and seat. This is basically the little valve that when your float bowl fills with gas, the float floats to the top and it pushes on this little cone that shuts off the fuel flow. If it's not shutting off the fuel flow, it's gonna leak. So you just need to make sure that that little cone that usually has a rubber tip is nice and clean. Um, I'll go through a kind of a few things you can do to verify that everything's good there. So first we're gonna just take off the float bowl. Um, you can usually do this while it's on the, say it's a lawnmower or a snowmobile or a dirt bike. Sometimes you can do this while it's on there. This little Makuni carburetor that I'm using for demonstration has four screws around the outside. A lot of these little Walbro lawnmower and generator carburetors have just one big um, screw at the bottom to take the float bowl off. Now you can probably drain this before you do this. Usually there's a drain plug at the bottom. You can get most of the gas out just by tipping it on its side and dumping it out of the uh, inlet hole. So these floats are almost always gonna be held on with a little pin. And the only thing holding that pin on is the shape of the float bowl usually. So you can just pop that right out and take your float off. And first things first, let's give the float a little shake. Make sure there's no gas inside the float. A lot of these floats are brass and they could get a leak. There's little solder joints. If it leaks and fills with gas, it's not gonna float to the top and it's not gonna shut off the, the needle. So that's another way this can kind of fail on you. Somewhere out there, a YouTuber needs your help. You can help tremendously by liking this video and subscribing to my channel, Cool Stuff Guys Like. The float needle should come off when you take your float out. Um, take a look at the tip of that. That's really what's doing the work shutting off here. If it's got a deep groove in it, just from being you know, 10 or 15 years old, you can try to clean it, but you might just need to replace it. If, of course, it's obviously dry rotted, probably gonna have to replace it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to clean it because probably two out of three times cleaning it up good is gonna solve your problem. So I like to use a toothbrush for this and also some of these little jet cleaners can be helpful to get into that float needle seat. So just kind of brush it, use some carb cleaner um, and just make sure it's nice and um, squeaky clean and then go ahead and put it back together and before you even put the carburetor back on, just hook your fuel line up and see if it's leaking. Of course, if it's got a fuel pump, 
you kind of have to hook your battery back up and turn your ignition on to know this but it's pretty quick to do so just see if it's leaking if that didn't fix your problem one thing that often will is just putting a little bit more preload on that little float needles. There's a little tab that pushes against it. You can bend that up just a hair. Just keep in mind, if you bend that up, you're actually going to be lowering the level that the float bowl fills with gas. So you don't want to get too aggressive here, or you could end up in a situation where your engine is starved for fuel because it's sucking that float bowl dry under maybe full throttle. If you've got a plastic float, this is going to be maybe something I wouldn't do. Um, you can wash it off and you can use a soldering iron to kind of bend the actual float part down relative to that little that little thing that presses against the um, the float needle. I'd only do this if it was kind of like a junker that I wasn't really worried about. If it was nice, I'd probably just focus on the um, needle and seat and buy a new one if just cleaning it didn't fix your problem, a new needle and seat. Then we'll just put it right back together and it should have fixed your problem. If for some crazy reason this didn't fix your problem, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know if there was some something I didn't mention here. I think I've pretty much covered all the basics. And thanks for watching this video and have a great week.